We are delighted to welcome one of the greats of the concert hall to our studio tonight. She is the violinist Ida Handel, an internationally renowned virtuoso who was born in Poland and emerged as a child prodigy at the age of three. Her father, a painter, gave up his career to dedicate himself to the musical education of his daughter. Ida Handel started her studies at the Conservatoire in Warsaw, where she received the gold medal at the age of seven. Then she went on to study in Paris and London. Among her teachers are Karl Flesch and George Enescu. What happened to that dress? I just had it not too long ago. These are the dresses that I usually put on for concerts. Let me take out something. Well, this is not one of those because that's more cocktail. Actually, I love all because it's so colorful, but I have to point out one, which is this one, which I bought in Madrid. Long, long, long ago. And it's a stunning color. I would, I suppose you would call it a cherry color and very sexy. But I could still afford to wear it at that time when I was in my 20s. So this is a very gorgeous dress, which I love. Nothing has changed since I was 18. It still fits, I'm glad to say. My waist is the same. Bonjour. Me voilà. Ok. Ya. Yeah. Bon. No, c'était moi ça. C'était moi. Wait, wait. Don't you want to make a little return? Of no, to... I was too quick. It was me. Wrong. I was wrong. I
I think I'm very lucky. If there is a God, I think he's been very good to me. Who has that privilege to be, if it's only one time, to be called number one? Then it means to be the chosen one. And it's so part of me. I am the violet. I was director of the Edinburgh Festival in 1949. And I wanted to make the theme Four Centuries of the Violin. I had invited Ida Hendel to lead the team that I was getting together which included Isaac Stern and Yehudi Menuhin. She performed certainly like an angel, and she is not only a great artist, but a great character, a personality. <laughs> This, this must have been the very, very first photograph of me. This one. And it says, Child Prodigy in Poland. We did have the violin in the house, because my older sister started to play the violin, first of all. And then she was at school one day, and I said to my mother, I'm going to play. My mother objected. She said, you are not to touch the violin, because you will drop it. And I disobeyed, went to the very high table, you know, a baby like that, could barely reach it, picked up the violin and played. What did you play? I played a, a song that my mother sang at the time. And I remember it was called The Orphan. I can't sing the melody because I no longer remember. But what I did remember was that it moved me very, very much, and I wanted to play it on the violin. She sang it, and I made the decision that I was going to play it, and I just did. Cudowne dziecko. Ida Hendlówna otrzymała w wyższej szkole muzycznej imieniem Chopina dyplom wirtuozowski i złoty medal. Hendrówna wystąpi przed mikrofonem Polskiego Radia Dnia 1.37 roku. Prasa londyńska zamieszcza entuzjastyczne krytyki o grze polskiego cudownego dziecka z Polski. Młodej skrzypaczki Idy Hendel. How was it to be a child prodigy? I was old. Mm. I was never a child. I'm much more childish now than I was then.
We were very, very close, very close-knit family. We were living in hell, close to the Russian border. My mother, father, and my sister, Alice. I never went to normal schools because I was playing the violin, but I was educated by private tutors, which my father hired to educate me. And I had, of course, my violin teacher, but that came much later. That came when I went to Warsaw. Her name is Esther Greenbaum. She's still alive in Los Angeles. Ida came to me when she was five. And I remember I was teaching her a few years, and she was the greatest talent in Poland. And she was so fast that I thought her, she not only understand and remember, but she was a genius. She put the finger that, like, you couldn't pick up the finger from the, from the violin. She was strong and she was born, her head was wonderful. This is what special, this little, little ticket. And it was like she was born to play violin. I know her father, and uh, they were poor at this time, and the father uh, helped him a lot. He was a shrewd man. He came to the papers, and he talked about the daughter, and she was playing. No, the father was, he didn't let her, but I don't know, you should tell her. She couldn't go out with the boy, you know, he held her that way. She belonged only to him. And because of this, she didn't have the use what other children have, you know. Just don't baby up, I have to work. I didn't say that. I did not never ever say that. Yeah, you did I expected her, if a, if a kid got up in the middle of the night, I'd, I'd expect her to go take care of it. So I don't have to give up. When people uh, uh, apply that terminology, unconditional love, my parents, yeah. I was very respectful. I adored them. I was affectionate. Kissed them day and night, and they kissed me back. I was rather obedient because I liked it. It's not that they pressured me to do it, but I felt safe and secure in their love, and I basked in it. I fell to play the violin. My, my father, as a very fanatic religious man, he didn't want me to play the violin. He considered a violinist uh, the lost human being. But I still was thinking about music, and I had it in my blood. And I said, when I will marry and I will have a child, I will try to give them uh, this what I supposed to be. So, um, one day, one uh, after my painting, I went out for a walk. And uh, for an hour or some, when I came back, 
uh, my little daughter said to me, Daddy, I want to play for you something. So she picked up my older daughter's violin and she started to play. do some playing. You know, it's funny. I'm nervous, yes, very nervous. Sometimes I wish I wouldn't go. Because I'm... Nervous for what? When she plays, I don't know. Nervous in case something happens. I never went through a normal childhood because, as you know, I was on the stage from day one. And uh, I don't know what it's like to go to school like a normal child, to associate with other children, because I always felt that I'm a violinist. As I said so many times, when I saw other children playing with dolls, I said, what is that? Why are they wasting their time? I'm playing with a doll when I have a violin. Would you have liked to go to school? No. No, I was terribly happy. I was very, very happy. Loved my family. All I needed was my family. Our parents and my sister. You know, as a child, she was beautiful. She still is. Because look at the bone structure. Oh, okay. Look how lovely she is. No, I'm being yeah, very, very Alice. Like don't don't interfere. Be silent. I don't for like me. it. Why? I don't like your compliments. Thank you. <laughs> this Thank is not a compliment. Well, it's okay. a statement no, of fact. It's okay. So, but I was always proud, and I always exploited that in her. And I said, okay, we have different gifts. I'm gifted to play the violin. She has a different gift. So the the competition from that area never, never occurred. <laughs> Good design. 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 Good design.
Which means good evening, right? No, it says good morning, but we say it every, I mean, all the time oh. in the Christmas. Ohio gozaimasu. Ohio gozaimasu. <laughs> Ohio? Ohio. Ohio, like Ohio. Yeah, Ohio, yeah. Ohio gozaimasu. Ohio gozaimasu. Ohio gozaimasu. Ohio gozaimasu. I do not feel the age in my playing, but people are influencing me to feel the age, to be completely focused upon constantly with their and scrutinized. And, and being, you know, uh, uh, with such uh, tension, that is difficult and very harmful. Very helpful. You cannot help it but to start thinking. Maybe I should have a tremor. Maybe I should tremble. But as long as I'm in demand, I will go on. I know people are waiting for flaws. They come to a concert and they say, can she still do it? They are waiting for failure. And some people would triumph if it would happen to me, definitely. Some people would have compassion or they just come to, to see a freak. I always hear you playing. I want to yeah. play. Okay. Very, very quiet. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm yeah. very, very upset. Oh. I have a yeah. lot of uh, you have trouble to overcome. Right. And Something you, you showed it to uh, <sighs> This is good. Very good. Yes. Ah. I see. Just a moment. Uh, <sighs> Terrible. What is it? Mm. 
when you start this program? A year and a half. I have to watch every step how I play. I'm not free I, because I'm always conscious. Mm. People might think it's me. You hear, you hear yes, something yes, yes, wrong. Yeah. It's I, I'm, I'm not sure, but You're so not sure. one reason. But maybe. Yeah. Clean. Yeah. This a bit, but <laughs> trouble, trouble. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine what a, a battle I have to oh. to perform to ignore this? And I I'm conscious of it all the time mm. that I have to avoid certain areas. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. It, it destroys me. As a young lady, I didn't think I was attractive at all. If I was in the company of a young, attractive woman, they focused, gravitated to this, and I was uh, sort of pushed aside because I'm the violinist who talks about Ida Handel as a female. And not only my father thought of me as an instrument only, he really forgot that there was this element. So maybe I still waited on the prince on the white horse to come and sweep me off and not be, uh, you know, afraid of me. You know, Alice, one more thing uh, about Deca. Please, please, next time you talk to them, tell them to walk her a lot because she needs the exercise. So, you know, the feeding is also important, what she eats, but it's very important for her to walk a lot. You know, otherwise she will get fat and, and you know what. I don't have to tell you. Okay. I always like the face like my sisters. She has a beautiful face. What's the difference? What is the difference? A big difference. Prominent cheekbones. Slav or Oriental. Tiny little nose, tiny teeth. She has a beautiful face. People say we look alike, but I don't see one uh, feature similar to my sister, not one. Would you have liked to have her face? Oh, 100%, certainly. I would have conquered the world with my playing in her face. <laughs> oh, there is never perfection in life. That's the truth. Aiming for perfection, never achieving it. But didn't you conquer the world? Uh, no. No.
My father was a tremendous influence because he had his eyes open on everything. He was such an observer. So what I learned, he knew instinctively. When I was young, he was always dissatisfied with my playing. He said, it's not giving me a message. It's too confined, it's not talking to me. And I thought my father was crazy. He said, what's he talking about messages? Music is beautiful, you just have to play technically well, perfectly. But after that, I realized much, much later that it's all a structure. Every bar, every sentence means something. He was a genius from every point of view. Enough, enough, my beauty, enough, my little treasure. Oh, my God, looks as if you didn't have anything to drink. selective when it comes to men. Very, very high standards. It doesn't mean to say that I didn't find somebody who answered all of that. I did. I thought there was one who was absolutely perfect. I couldn't find a fault with this person. It was Trilibidaki. I didn't find any flaw in him. He answered everything that I looked for in a human being, not necessarily in a man. He was just uh, extremely funny. He had a tremendous sense of humor and the culture and, and the genius. You know, the whole persona was so overwhelming. Does it say it all? But let me show you uh, some of the photography. I saw, I looked at the newspaper and I saw an article. I said, who is this wild man conducting? And I read Sergio Cherebidaki, the current conductor of the Berlin Philharmonic. It's scary. <laughs> Why is it wild. He looks like a wild man here. Die künstlerische Zusammenarbeitung zwischen Cheribidake und seiner flammenden Verehrerin <lacht> ist in einem Unikat, Unikat verewigt. Gemeinsam haben sie in 1953 für His Masters, wo ist das Violinkonzert von Brahms, aufgenommen. Sie ist, sagt Cheribidake zur selben Zeit, eine grandiose Musikerin und eine glänzende Geigerin. Sehr miteilsam, aber absolut kein Geist. Eine unglückliche Liebe, I don't know what he talks about, sie hat mehr geweint als gespielt. Ein 
als Frau eine fleischfressende Pflanze. That's the greatest lie. And that was with his girlfriend. She followed him all over. Let's see which is the lightest. They are all about the same. Oh, that's even heavier. Deka, what shall I do? Can you help me carry my, my coat? This might be a little less heavy. OK. Let me try on. And see what that. It's pretty warm. Okay, decision is made. That's the one. It's all shoes. As everybody can see, I'm a shoe addict. So, here are the shoes and the meal. Rabies shorts and everything with the scissors. Okay, Deca. Okay, go, go, go. Come, 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 come. Out of the prison. That's it. Very good. I put the coat on you. Deca. Okay. Oh. oh my. My body. Oh, Judas. 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 Oh,
muito cachorro que se fosse desgrado. Where is the meeting committee? When my career was at its peak, was because of conductors who kept inviting me. Uh, Von Bynum would invite me. Bernard Haitin, of course, Chelibidake, Kubelik, Zubin Mehta, Simon Rattle. They wanted to work with me. All of a sudden, the picture changed. I do believe it had nothing to do with my play. But some of the conductors want to keep the young. They always want new faces, regardless whether it's good or not. New and young, new and young. And I've heard some of these new and young uh, performers, and they are total mediocrities. Why don't they discover the ones who are already there? Thank you. Thank you. What are you going to do with the photograph? Just are you going to put it in the bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. I'm going to have it on my computer. So this is a Strad, yes? Yes. I think 1690 or something? Yes, 96. 96? Just on the open A. Yes. Should not be. You see? Oh, that's your plank theta, right? Why does this happen? I have to be careful all mm -hmm. the time mm -hmm. to watch it. Have you got an explanation? Uh, sometimes it's on the sometimes it's on the C natural. It's a it's a little bit of a wolf, you know, with cellos. I never had this before. Yeah, I know. Um, so cellos it, it, cellos have a big problem. Violence, it's a little problem. You know. Yes, but uh, you came across that before? Uh, I've heard it on violins. It's not very common. But what is but it? You can... It's hard to explain. A wolf note is where the, the violin... It cracks. Inside. No, it's not cracks. It sounds like a cracked sound. Oh, yeah. That it's not smooth. Yeah. Right. It's so depressing. It's so depressing. You know, some people will say, oh, oh it's age and she is not capable of, of handling it anymore the same way. Believe me, it has nothing to do no, with it. You know your instrument. Yes, yeah. I know, but yeah. some other people. Because, you know, the first thing that people immediately accuse of somebody who is not 20, that you have the bow arm right. is in trouble. Yeah. And it's not me. I have so much recognition and so much appreciation. So I'm not quite alone. There are so many intellectuals who appreciate what I do from the public, from the young generation of violinists. So no, I'm not alone. And I have so much support 
from my peers, from my colleagues. It's absolutely wonderful. Some critics, maybe, a few, in the minority. But no, 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 I am not alone. That's good, Deca. Well done. Good, Deca. Good girl. Come on, Deca. <laughs> the steps are high for Deca. Okay, come, come, come. Oh, what's wrong with you? There are a couple of frequencies in the violin, and they should be very close for it to sound its best. Yes. And so one of them doo, 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 is a D when I blow in the F hole. And then the other one, if you don't mind me doing something unusual to the violin, it won't hurt anything. Well, you're responsible now. Of course. You have to buy another one if yes, something yes. goes wrong. Or build one. I can one. get you another one. Build one like yes, a Strat. Sir. Boom, 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 boom. They're very far. Doom, doom. So that's what B flat about. Doom, doom, doom. So, so there's about a third between them. What I'd like to experiment with is just adding a little bit of mass underneath the fingerboard and seeing if that changes the way the A string feels. Because I think that might be part of what's going on. If Shall we get a bow out? It's not going to harm anything, right? Well, everything changes in a violin, so of course you don't want to... This is completely reversible. I'll just put on a little bit of um, clay uh -huh. that I can just take right off. Okay. So this is not permanent. This is just a test. Right. I can take your cookie. Okay. No, leave okay. it on the floor. It's coming apart anyway. All right. I always used a, an aluminum mm -hmm. A. It is the string. Maybe nothing to do with the violin. Yes. It's a little better. She may have been lonely sometimes. Traveling around the world by herself. But on the other hand, if she's in her hotel bedroom in Hong Kong, she's always got her violin between herself and being lonely.
next month I'm going to London and uh, then in May I'm going back to Japan to play at the Mata Archeric Festival uh, Beppu in June I'm back in London also performing then in all probability going to St. Petersburg then comes August I hope to have a little holiday but there is a chance to go back to Israel next year I'm waiting to hear probably Australia New Zealand maybe the Far East and so on then comes the winter season Thank you.